We're here, everybody. Cartridge and Quarters, the first, the pilots, whatever you may call it. We are here, an offshoot of the Pixel Play podcast, the retro version, lots of lots of just old school talk. That's the place to be here. Uh, my name is Adam C.S. Radical, joined by one of my good friends, Chris, a.k.a. Gin and Chris. How are you doing on this fine? Technically, it's Thursday evening, but it's Saturday morning in YouTube time, so we, we won't talk about that part. Or I guess YouTube time. I should say podcast in general time as this thing releases on Saturday mornings, every Saturday morning at 10 p.m. 10 p.m., 10 a.m. Holy crap, first pilot. And I'm already <laughs> having a massive like misperception of time. Maybe, 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 you know what? We keep talking about Chrono a lot, you know, in our office. Maybe, maybe I really do need to go play some Chrono games and kind of remember what time's supposed to be. Yeah, except that game takes time and it just like kind of just. Does are you that. are then, you trying to say that Square Enix and time travel is a little wonky? Uh, in every single case, yes. Yeah, Absolutely. okay, fair, every fair enough. Case. I, yes. I have heard, in, for example, with the new Strangers of Paradise game, that also in typical Square Enix fashion, they just write randomness out of the ass in that in that game. So, you know, but I mean, what can you expect from a game that's all about killing chaos? Well, what I know, yeah, I was going to say, from taking the original Final Fantasy and then Stranger of Paradise and just looking at them both and then saying the word chaos 700 times, I think that's all you really need to do and you'll understand what the remaster is like. Well, look, as we all know, like clearly in the old days, all NES games literally just have one word constantly spoken over and over again. That's all you need to worry about. Usually, which is incorrect. It used to be five. That's That used to be the most mm. that you got, okay? So we yeah. made it. It's a bit of an upgrade. Then we got to Super Nintendo, and you were willing to get, like, hundreds of words. Holy, holy man, it was a lot. And, and then we got to, like, PlayStation, and then all of a sudden it's like, hey, how's, uh, like, thousands? And we're like, that's a lot of reading. Yeah, all some of games a sudden, became a lot of reading. Yeah, and then we were like, oh, my God, I actually don't mind reading. What the hell is this? This is true. I felt smarter then. And then voice acting was a thing, and I was like, cool, I can be dumb again. Yeah, except it, well, depends on the kind of dumb. Final Fantasy X told us the kind of dumb that it can be if you uh, don't know how to laugh. <laughs> but yeah how, how, how excited are you to actually uh to be on a podcast just literally about just talking about how old you are i oh great well i was <laughs> i was so happy until literally three seconds ago when i was like yeah i get to re uh, relive my youth <laughs> uh no it's good to be podcasting again it's been a while especially uh since uh podcasting with you you know what i mean yeah for for those who don't know, we used to do a very old podcast, and uh, it, it we you know Chris had to dust off the old cobwebs. I haven't changed anything, so you know I, I figured I'd bring him in lightly. That's that's why I'm doing the amazing hosting job where I made no mistakes, like saying the sh- the show is coming out in the morning at 10 p.m. Nothing of the sort that I ever say is wrong whenever I do stuff. I am infallible. There is no there's no misspeaking for me ever on a podcast. Never happens. I mean, time being messed up like that is just a gamer move. I remember playing Diablo 2 over like on Battle.net back in the day when I mean it was dial up internet. Oh my god, I am aging myself. And um <laughs> and I remember it was like, oh I'll just play until like 10 p.m. And I looked and it was 8 a.m. So it doesn't actually time doesn't exist when there you're was gaming. an M it's, in there. There was an M. Yeah, that's as long as the time ends in an M, you're doing it correctly. Perfect. Yeah. And if it doesn't, well then I, I something's wrong you, you you found the alternate dimension you've fallen into a wormhole something 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 dark side i don't know something something dark side <laughs> fantastic so so yeah uh. we we for those who are coming onto the show and seeing the normal pixel play format have you been watching the show that me and kaylin have been doing for now over 60 episodes which is crazy to think about already that's speaking of time that's how fast time is um this show is not going to be similar to that because, again, it's retro, so we're not going to be exactly talking about news stories every week. It's not It's not as easy. If stuff gets announced, like when the Cowabunga edition of uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series came in, that would be something that we'd probably like, talk about. We oh, yeah. do have a couple of things we can talk about this week, but for the most part, like we're going to be going kind of off the cuff with this. Like We're going to go from whatever story we're talking about and then we're just going to go on a massive diatribe on how final fantasy used to be good for like 20 minutes that's probably going to be like the gist of every episode because we're both massive Uh, square quote-unquote fans i I should tread lightly on the fan stuff right now yeah apart from apart from remake for seven uh i don't think i've truly loved a final fantasy game since 10 2 which is a long time yeah i'd like i may give it to 12 
And 14 is really good. Somehow they got really good at one MMO. But the actual mainline series... Wah, wah. It's been kind of rough. And I mean, on this on the show specifically, I mean, we're going to talk about a myriad of stuff from... Because, I mean, we're both in our 30s. We're, we're both like... You're you're like barely 80s kid, but mostly 90s kid. I'm pretty much 90s kid in in, oh, yeah. in the full bit. So a lot of the stuff we'll be talking about is probably more in like the Genesis, Super Nintendo, N64, PlayStation era here. But to make sure everybody understands, like when we're talking retro, it's 20 years back, which means PS2 technically can count. So that's probably as far back as we'll spend most of our time on. Yeah. So that's what you expect. Now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think we're going to go too bar, far back and talk about, you know, Pong and Asteroids. I think that might be pushing it a little bit. But like NES from NES to PS2 era is probably what you'll see the most on here. And we'll be doing a lot of fun stuff, you know, a lot of reminiscence, a lot of nostalgia tripping, and then mostly tripping over ourselves when we try to remember things that we have forgotten over the last, you know, X amount of years that we've been alive. This is true. Yeah, I got to think back like 30 years for some of these games. I'm going to be like, it was... Fun? I think it was fun. <laughs> I don't remember. You're like, was it was it fun? I'm not sure I remember. It's hard to say. Yeah, being eight was hard. We all Except we all for the fact it wasn't. Well, there's also the thing too that like you know, here's a great conversation to actually start on. Um how many times do you hear people now, especially once they're out, they're in like their thirties? Actually, we hear it now from people in their twenties these days, which is kind of surreal. Uh the statement of gaming isn't what it used to be. Oh and yeah. I always find that interesting to hear. Because the honesty in it is like, well, of course, because as a kid, you didn't know what used to be. Yeah. It's, it's, well, it, there's a lot of things that I can go into that really defines it. But I think the biggest part of it is that, well, you, there's no precedent before. So whenever you get blown away by anything because you're a child and everything blows you away, you know, every Canada Day for us, like up until like 15, we look at fireworks like they're the craziest invention ever because every time we're like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty explosions. So, you know, naturally as a kid, even at five years old, Barney's hide and seek seems like a marvel to play when you're playing that on Genesis. So that is true. That I think there's also true. the part, too, that like once you've played enough games over the course of your life, you start to become numb of similar things over and over again. So like, sure, we all like JRPGs here. But eventually, playing the same kind of JRPG over and over again doesn't quite do the same anymore. You kind of expect something to be a little bit different to at least change it up in your mind. Yeah. Because sure, somebody could play Final Fantasy 15. It's their first Final Fantasy, and they may think it's amazing. And I've seen it. There's a lot of kids that you know that are probably like 16, playing 15 for the first time, and thinking like, man, this is this is JRPGs. These are so cool. And we're all sitting there in our, in our you know, rocking chairs or lazy boys being like, back in <laughs> my day. <laughs> Oh, it's so true. Our rocking chairs are just gamer chairs, though. That's the only difference. Yeah, true. Like, this is my rocking chair now. I mean, yeah, it doesn't rock that much. It doesn't really go that far. Probably oh, mine for, goes... for a good reason, because if it did, I would fall over constantly. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm in full control of my very dangerous chair. I'm the type that, like, if this thing goes back even just a little bit, it freaks me out because I think, like, I'm falling, but it's just the, it's just the matter of, like, you move sl- suddenly enough that you think the speed counts for how far you're going to fall, but no, not quite. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people have that actually. You're not the you're not alone in that. I don't get that. I can like get into a chair and it can almost go fully back and I'm like, "Yay!" But then other people get in it, moves like an inch and it's like, "Whoa! I'm going to die." So, you're not alone on that. I've seen it. Okay, well, it's just, okay, so I'm not totally crazy. I am still crazy, no. just not totally. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I do I do think that a large part of the sentiment that gaming isn't the same as it used to be is really just a product of the fact that you've been playing for so long that it's not the same. Cause I mean, it works for music too. It works for movies. Like I'm a big Iron Maiden fan. And at some point you just can't listen to Iron Maiden for a while. Cause you just overdid it, you know, in the yeah, same oh, way absolutely. that like if you eat too, if you eat McDonald's too many times in a row, eventually you kind of get sick of that big Mac, even though it's delicious, no matter how terrible for your health it is. So yeah, it, just, it really is just one of those things that it's like, it's not necessarily that gaming is bad. It's just you need a second to get away from it, kind of. I would think is probably the best way of looking at it. Yeah, oh, for sure. I think, yeah, there's a couple factors, like, especially when you got people like our age and stuff and you lived through, say, the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo era, and then you're looking at what it is now. First, there's a huge amount of nostalgia because back then, only a certain amount of games came out per year. You could only afford a couple of them. So yeah, Chrono Trigger... Final Fantasy VI, or whatever games we're going to end up to obviously gushing about on this show. Um, they're, they were fantastic because you could play that same game eight times. I played Chrono Trigger to see every ending, 
got to level 99 or star star or whatever it took. It took like 40 playthroughs, but I was willing to do it. So there's definitely that like nostalgic, just like feeling plus the time of your life, right? You don't have to work. You have very little responsibility. Sure, you go to school, but I mean, sure, school can be hard, but for the most part, it's like going to work for an hour and mostly hanging out with your friends. Like it's kind of like as if you were doing that. But then there are parts that are different, of course, but that's just because, of course, everything changes. Technology is always changing. You take um, like a Super Nintendo game. It came out and that better be good because that's the release. It comes out. That's the cartridge. You buy it. There's no updates. There's no getting it digitally. Everything was different. You waited in line to buy it at a store. It would probably be sold out. If it wasn't, you got mad at your mom. It's not her fault. Sorry, mom, by the way, for a lot of those. And, uh, you know, whereas now you sit on your couch and you download 30 games in one PSN sale, like me, and then, you know, you're, you're, you're playing everything and then there's patches and it's like you play, like I played through the New Horizon game, then there was a patch after that. And I'm like, ah, I bet you it was a little bit more cleaned up, but whatever, I'm already done it. Like, which version of the game did you play? Right. Even when we go into the speedrunning community, there's like, oh, well, we're running version 1.03 because after version 0.104, there was this change that made the speed run harder. So now patches are involved where it's like, hey, did you ever play Chrono Trigger? It's never just like, oh, well, which which patch you know, yeah. or anything like that. It, it's it's kind of complicated because, again, it's a factor of just how we've evolved in terms of tech. Like there's it's the sheer volume, too, because the industry has become so big since, you know, when we were younger. But yeah, like you oh, yeah. said, the fact that games are always changing because no game is never truly done patching. Like I still see patches for games that are like five years old because they're still they're working on stuff like No Man's Sky to this day is still evolving. And that thing's been out for forever. So, yeah. you know, it's hard to say like gaming may not be the way it used to be because, well, when you got a game back in the day, like when you got Chrono Trigger out of the box, that was it. That was Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Um, unless something really bad would happen and they need to like reprint copies and maybe they fix it in the reprints. It was very rare that you would ever see a difference in that game. So yeah. it's why like if you ever see in in say the uh, speedrunner community or emulators and stuff like that, it's rare that you see anything that's just that's other than 1.0 and 1.1 and that's about as far as it goes. Yeah, You generally don't see much beyond that. Whereas obviously, you know, I just downloaded a Destiny 2 update and it was like, point zero four zero three three eight like it's stuff like that where it's just it's never ending so you know when you get a game at launch you know great example because we like making fun of it here on the pixel play in in the family as a whole is cyberpunk yeah cyberpunk right. at launch was really not that great and because of that it kind of gives you the you know the fond memories of what used to be when you used to be younger and games came out and they actually functioned and that's kind of a product of the industry being what it's changed into where that mm -hmm games nowadays seem to come out broken instead and we kind of feel like that's unacceptable but at the same time too a lot of games that we also grew up with were probably broken but we didn't think anything of it because we didn't know better oh yeah if you're playing an old school game and you go through one screen and there's just too many enemies on the screen at the same time thing goes down to like seven frames per second for the next 20 seconds and it's like chugging along but for us that was just normal it was like oh cool this is that part well, yeah, it's like we used to grow up with dial-up internet, so you just assumed everything was slow. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, like, it, it's funny now because, like, we're in this new age of consoles where 60 frames is a normalcy again, you know, or at least yeah. possibly normal. And here we are where, you know, it's a big deal to be at 60, and yet it used to be 60 a long time ago. Yeah. And then obviously, you know, we got into 3D territory, and then 60 frames wasn't nearly as easy. So. Oh, no. It's just one of those things that, like, I, I think the statement, to go back to where it all began, you know, gaming isn't what it used to be, I think is not necessarily true. It's just, it's a product of your environment. It's a product of your experience. It's almost like you being a, you're a weathered gamer. Like, you've just seen a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and I think music is, like, the perfect uh, comparison there, like you were saying, because, like, if you listen to some of the music in the 70s, 80s, you had to be a se certain type of artist. You actually had to like sing because if you couldn't sing, there was no cover up for that and all that kind of stuff. It was different. Now people make crazy music and have no actual like talent themselves if they were to sing live, but because they're able to record their voice and do all the notes and everything in a computer, make this crazy song. Does that song mean it's not a good song? No, the song's crazy. It's amazing. But of course it's different 
than what it used to be because things are always evolving, whether it's technology, the way of doing things. Because if we did the same thing the same way forever, we would be bored. We would be so bored. Yeah, and not to mention there's the fatigue effect too. Like again, like I said, like I'm a big Maiden guy, but eventually, you know, you you, you kind of yeah. get tired of listening to the same music. Like I'm also a big Dream Theater guy. And for a good chunk of time, I couldn't listen to him just because I'd heard the same stuff over and over again. And then in the last six months, I went back into listening to the catalog and I'm like, holy shit, I forgot how good this is. And now I'm listening to it all over again in the same way that like, I didn't like JRPGs for a little while because they were getting too formulaic. They were doing the same mm-hmm. stuff or they were like a lot of other JRPGs that if, especially those in the PS2 market, remember there were a lot of crap. There was a lot of oh, yeah. like anime cover JRPGs that had no substance to them or were just really badly written or badly ga- like badly coded the gameplay. Like the ideas that they came up with were horrible. And then all of a sudden, you know, Persona came out and then it went away for a long time. Persona 5 comes out and then I get introduced to Trails of Cold Steel and all of a sudden, oh shit, I love JRPG. This is what I remember being so good. So sometimes, you know, you just need to be away from it for a little bit. So like, I, I honestly would say to somebody who ever says the notion of like, hey, I, I, I don't know if I like games the way I used to. It's like, well, then step away for a while. It maybe just is that you've kind of grown tired of it. Maybe you need something else to go. Or at the very oh, least, like, try something out of your comfort zone that you normally don't play. Because that's when you can find interesting things. Like, I've said it a bunch of times on the on the Pixel Play show as well, like Coffee Talk, which is the most, like, you don't think anything of it because it's just a it's just almost like a visual novel about, about you being a barista. But it's stuff like that that, like, because it's different to what you're used to, the same grinding, like, JRPG, F, first-person shooter, open-world RPG format that it just takes something else to just kind of... T- take you away for a little while and then remember, Oh yeah, I do like these games. I just kind of overdid it. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Especially if you play a type of game, like I have to match some, imagine somebody who goes into only MMOs or goes into something like a, um, a service game, like destiny, you're doing something over and over and over at some point you're going to feel burnt out. But that even is the same. If you're somebody who just loves platformers, like 2d platformers on, you know, whether they're indie games or retro or whatever, you're probably going to get burned out from always doing the same thing. So if you don't have some variety or even if it, maybe just games in general, right? Because you're just sitting there, you're gaming, step away. Yeah. And then as you do, eventually, maybe if it's meant to be, all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow, I haven't thought of that in a while. And you go back and you're like, damn, this is really fucking good. I forgot about this. Yeah. And 100%. I mean, I had that worry with Horizon because, you know, open world games, I felt like I was starting to get a little bit torn out of. And I played it and, you know, again, we're not going to talk too deeply on that because it's a newer thing, but it's that same kind of thing where I still loved Horizon a lot, but I think the open world stuff grinded to me after a while because, again, I didn't take enough time away. So, like, you know, it did feel like some of the stuff was getting a little bit too much. And then I said, screw it, not going to do it anymore. So I I think a lot of it comes from a bunch of factors. One, just being that we're so overwhelmed these days with just the sheer catalog then at the same time, you've also been playing for a long time. You've seen most of the stuff that you think you're ever going to see. So you've established exactly where you stand. And then I think the most important part, honestly, is, well, the world kind of sucks these days. So I think it's hard to enjoy a lot of things. This is true. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, enough about the negativity. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about one of the very few stories that we can probably go into that's kind of recent. So the big one, obviously, uh, we talked about on the Pixel Play podcast last Wednesday, which is technically yesterday, but hey, podcast time is different. It's technically more than that now. Um, PlayStation Plus came out with its new tier system that it's going to release probably in June, but sometime towards the end of the first half of this year. And for retro gamers, that could mean potentially, in a very vague sense, 340 games streaming only for PS3, but PS1, 2, and PSP games being both streaming and downloadable. Now, Obviously with PS3, again, won't get too far into that because it's 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 not technically retro, but the streaming thing, people forget just how weird the platform for PS3 was. It's not the same as like any other platform they work with. The processor was a little bit different. The way that it just kind of was built was radically different, which is why they completely went back to what it used to be with PS4 because they realized, oh, wait, this was a nightmare for people to make games on. Let's not do that yeah. again. Yeah, that was brutal. That's a brutal system to try and break down and emulate on anything even another playstation which is crazy and then obviously we have the key here which is the one two and p so 
one, two, P. I know, it's funny when you <laughs> think of it that way. So we yeah. don't know specifically what that means because they were very vague about it. They didn't give any even any examples of what that could mean. Now, you can assume that anything that Sony is literally tied to, like your Ratchets, your Jack and Daxters, you know, that kind of stuff you would expect. But it's oh, 340, yeah. so there's still open space. So the question would be, what should fill that open space? Now, I put a short out on the channel, basically giving like my thoughts. It should be a mix. I don't want to see it just being all the hits. I don't want to see nothing but big names. I yeah. would like to see some obscurity in there. Whether that means things like, I don't know, Legend of Dragoon, um, Shadow Hearts. I'm also thinking JRPGs because that's most of where the obscurity comes from. But like you can yeah. get even like Klonoa. Like you can get into some weird territory where it's like, it's not just Metal Gear, Metal Gear, Metal Gear, you know? It, I want to see a couple of things that, like... I want to look at that list when it, whenever it comes out or if it just releases so we have to just wait for somebody to do the list themselves. I want to look at that list and go, I can't believe that's on there. I'm so going to play that. Like, that's what... I think that's what's going to make a lot of people end up getting it because for collectors especially, some of these games are impossible to find, and if they are, they're fucking oh, yeah. expensive. Yeah, you can pay up to like a thousand dollars for a fucking game. That also, it's usually the shitty game, the one that just they didn't make many copies, so that's why it's. Yeah, rare. I think like there's Rule of Roses one on PS2 that's just stupid yes. expensive because there just wasn't a lot of copies of it. Yeah, I'm trying absolutely. to look it up now, but of course, you know, when you want to look something up, Chrome is like, no, 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 I don't want to work for you. Yeah, no, thank you. I will use all your RAM and then I will go. <laughs> but like, there, there are so many games out there that like I think of. And it's just, ins it's insane, like, how hard it would be to find. Like, even even if I had money, I don't think I'd want to collect. Like, I have yeah. a small collection of PS2 games that I've kept, but I don't think I would go out of my way now and, like, try to fill out, you know, all the stuff that I used to play because, man, that's a lot of money to go through. It's brutal. It absolutely can be brutal. It, because they're at least physical, could you sell them afterwards if needed? Yes, yeah, sure. But I mean, that's going to be a lot of work. You're probably going to lose money in the transactions unless you happen to get something that's good and actually keeps its value or goes up um, and how well you take care of it. So then even if you buy the stuff, are you even going to use it? Because what if it goes down in value because you use it and scratch it or doesn't look pretty? Who knows, right? So it is definitely a, I would say, very fun, but expensive and possibly risky hobby. Yeah. And yeah, I, I did finally find it. A Rula Rose... On eBay, at least that I'm looking at, just a just the just the disc, just the disc, seven seventy five US. Easy sealed, in box, more than twelve hundred dollars. So wow, you know that just shows like it's not always it's not always um the kind of game that it, it's just it's printing issues. It's why it's why like you know the fabled E T was always so expensive. So oh yeah yeah oh E T. Oh, what a history. So for you personally, like, what are some of the things that you would want to see in this premium package for, for nostalgia's sake? Because, you know, there could be a lot, and 340 does leave a lot to the imagination. Now, PSP is going to be interesting too, so I, I'm not yeah, really sure which direction that. that I would go in personally for that. But yeah, what, what would be some of the things like you would like to see immediately? So the first one I actually have been dying for, I've been checking Steam, not Steam itself, but the news regarding Steam, Every day for like seven fucking years because of this game. Uh, obscure JRPG on PS2. Oh, uh, Obscure S the Aftermath, I think it was the full title? No, 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 not Obscurity. Is the, like, this is just an obscure title in oh, general. Oh, because there, is, the there is that game. <laughs> oh, I, oh, wow, I actually forgot about that. Um, no, uh, Radiata Stories, oh, I yeah. think is how you said that. Yep. It was just Stories. such, yeah, it was just such a fun jrpg and i have such fond memories of that and i didn't play that when i was like 12 or whatever i was actually in university at the time so i was already in my like early 20s and and all that so yeah still much younger than i am right now um but it's not like i have this memory where it could possibly be like actually a really horrible game but i was just eight so didn't know different um i think it was probably a decent game uh, and I, I really would love, love to go game. back. I played it yeah. way. Yeah, I rented that way back in the day. Back in the day, again, when game rentals was a thing, too. So, oh, yeah, game rentals. Yeah, yeah was, I remember it getting decent. that. Like, it wasn't amazing. Like, I would say it's like in the seven, eight range, but like, it was oh, yeah. still decent. Like, it was back in the day when Square was, you know, still making decent RPGs. Yeah. And then that's the only reason I picked it up. I, I heard it was coming out. I saw an article in a gaming magazine. I don't even know if I would have seen it on a website at that point. Like, obviously, there's websites at that point, but. 
I don't know how big, like probably would have seen it on IGN or something. Like it would have been something very specific. Um, but I just saw it and it was like, hey, it's a Square RPG. And I think even in the article or whatever I'd read, whether it was online or not, uh, it said it was like JRPG comfort food. And whenever I think about that game, that is what I associate it with. Like, is it an amazing game? Is the voice acting probably cheesy? All that kind of stuff? Yeah, probably. But it was just, it was good. It was nice. It was wholesome. But it had its big emotional moments. The music would have been charming in the traditional, you know, 2000s and 90s square style. And uh, it would be, yeah, it would be comfort food. And honestly, and that's like, what I would still hope if, for. Even if they like left it alone it doesn't actually look that terrible you know going back to today but if they gave it just a quick like sharpening just so it doesn't look like really really old i think yeah. it'd be, it would still be fine to come out with today like you could put that on steam and, and i think it would do fine you know putting that on switch too that would work pretty well so oh, yeah in in those cases that'd be pretty good yeah ratting out of stories is definitely one of those ones that like man I, again like that was another game that i would have picked up but it just it's it's too expensive yeah, it was, I, it, I'm pretty sure it was expensive at the time, um, but it was also at a time where I had just picked up a PS2. I was very late into the PS2 game for some reason. Um, I had one pre-ordered and canceled my pre-order, which is unheard of. I think back at that and I'm like, who is that man that did that? What is wrong with me? Um, but yeah, because I was late to the game, I think I'd only had my PS2 for like three months. So it was just one of those like, well, I need a couple games to play on this thing and Radio Out of Stories had just been coming out and it just... It was just the stars aligned, you know? Yeah. So what else? Um, I've also got... I'm also looking at this list, and every single one is a JRPG, which I didn't realize until now, which is pretty crazy. I mean, that's uh, kind of the camp that I fall into with most of these, because that's really 100%. what I played most of my teenage years. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, same. Teenage and, and 20s, it was JRPGs, especially on PS2 and, and Super Nintendo. They were like the JRPG kings and queens, you know? Um, PS2, I've got the Rowdy Out of Stories, and then I've got the Xeno Saga trilogy, because I have no way to replay that yeah. right now. And I still don't know what the fuck happened in that whole series, so I just want to go back and try and understand more. I own one and two, and three is just stupid expensive. Yeah, I had all three, and I think I traded them in at uh, GameStop or whatever back when I was not thinking of the future. That was also a weird series, because they decided to change the graphics, like, after one yeah. game. Yeah! Yeah, and they, I actually preferred the one in the first game. Yeah, they went from like a more anime feel to a well, I guess they're both anime feel, but they went from like a chibi anime feel to more of a um, kind of like a Star Ocean anime feel that it does. Yeah, make, yeah, which yeah. I was kind of disappointed by because I mean Star Ocean already exists, so when they decide to go a little bit more realistic with their characters, I'm like, no, 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 because then you just look like yeah. everything. Like you had a unique, yeah, it just you had yeah. a unique look, and it was good. Yeah, the the look in that first game, like the first one is still by far my favorite. I play I think I replayed that like four times, but the third game, I probably only played through it once. Maybe two, but probably just the one time. Yeah, I barely remember most of it. Like I remember yeah. how like terrifying like the first like couple hours of the game are because you yeah. basically get like taken up taken over by aliens and they start like sucking the life out of people like it's Final Fantasy Spirits within. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh god, that movie's actually retro, I guess. Um Unfortunately, yeah, uh, yeah. we won't talk yeah, about it much, though, unless it's unless we feel like just shitting on Final Fantasy as a whole again. Yeah, of course. But yeah, the Xenosaga trilogy and the other one I mentioned for PS2, which I don't think you can get anywhere right now, is Dragon Quest VIII. Uh, I never actually finished that on my PS2. I don't remember why. I got very far into it. I got preoccupied with some other series. And I think by the time I would have been going around to it, I picked up a PS3... It was backwards compatible, so I was like, it's fine, I'll still get to it, everything's fine. That PS3 broke, I replaced it with the slightly newer one, no longer backwards compatible, and I just obviously could never go back. I probably just traded it in, probably to help pay for the new PS3. Yeah. Um, I own it, but I don't think I actually spent much time in it. I think it was probably because at the time I got it, it was, it was during that getting close to burnout phase, uh, where, yes. where it took Persona to kind of bring it back. And, like, I've played Eleven. Or is it 11 or is it... Yeah, the newest one's 11. Yeah, 11. Yeah, 11. And, like, I didn't mind it. I thought it was a little too old school. I think that's where it got to the point of, like, being too far back. So I wonder if 8's probably in a similar state where I'm going to play it and be like, okay, this is this is maybe a little too old school bare bones for me now. Because, like, the classic, like, 
you're the hero, here's the evil guy, and here's like this very, very basic, you know, gameplay system, which, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's always, it's the, the turn based system has always been a great thing to go with. Like, it works every time. But, oh, yeah. Eventually, the problem is, is that without something a little bit extra to add on to it, it they don't age nearly the same. And I think because. Dragon Quest stories for me personally, I don't, I'm sure some people would disagree, but like I find Dragon Quest stories to be a little more dry and not nearly as like unique and interesting. Whereas I can play Final Fantasy four and six, for example, and be pretty happy with those. Even like yeah. after the 10th time, I think there's a little bit more unique to, uniqueness to it where I find Dragon Quest tends to be a little more on the safe side. Yes. Dragon Quest is definitely on the safe side. Yeah. Even just with 11, when I played through that recently, definitely on the safe side yeah and you mentioned you feel like eight would be very similar to 11 when i was playing 11 all i could think about was how much it reminded me of eight i feel like they actually were aiming and looking at eight as like their um as uh what they were going to base it off of because nine ten all of that like it seemed a little bit different like they went a different direction i think nine was like a portable game went even more back into like a different art style 11 and 8 you can put them side by side and besides the characters having a different outfit it's the same game yeah but i mean like it's kind of similar to what dynasty warriors is to their fans like you don't change too much but it means that you're using a formula that's always worked so why not yeah which I, i i I can't, I can't help myself. I wish Final Fantasy would follow that, but no, no, we got, we got to change it every single game. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I, I, I think that especially, I think Dragon Quest, I would be shocked if it isn't. I think that if there was any PS2 game that would go on there, this would be probably one of them. Oh, for sure. Radiata Stories, maybe. Uh, and then when we talk about Xenosaga, that one I'd be pretty doubtful on, but hey, I'd be pretty happy to see it. Cause if they put all three on, I'd finally get a chance to actually play through it all. Yeah, I definitely play through those again. Definitely. I definitely. And I think the key here is like the price of it, you know, that's that's going to be a big deal and I believe if I'm not mistaken it was 17.99 for us Canadian which or no, 17.99 for the US. So it's going to be over 20 bucks a month for us. Um what personally for you is it going to take to really get you to pull the trigger on that because you know, it might be something that maybe you pop in for a month, but like if you if it was ever something you're going to be considered consistently, like what are they going to have to do? Like in terms of refresh, in terms of the library at launch, like what are you really looking for from them? So that's, I think you said a really good point there because you're like going in for a couple months or for a month or something. Yeah, probably a lot of people will do that. And for me, there's no question there would be as long as, because I buy annually. So as long as there's a chance for me to only upgrade for a month or two, and not have to like do the whole year all at once or something. Yeah, that's a big no, focus but, for me too. I, I really yeah. hope that you're able to take like an existing account. Like if you're just using the essential and being able to say, hey, I just want to buy a month of this. So let me pay the extra and let me get the extra perks for a month. Absolutely. I hope that they allow that because that would make it very easy for customers to be like, hey, okay, like with the extra, they could say, put some cool game on, you know, the next month and we'll be like, oh, cool. I'll go take that for a month and come back to that same thing could go if they put like if they suddenly turn around and be like hey it's x games 30th anniversary let's throw all of its library on here and we'll be like oh sick i'll go play some of these games i'll get that for a month or two like i think that's a good way of looking at it i hope they do that yeah oh 100 percent uh and if they do that i mean there's no question i'm going in month every so month you know it could be once every three months once every four months upgrade for that month play a couple games uh that i feel like playing like xeno saga like that any of these games are on there, there's no question that I would go in. Um, to The question would be like, what would it take me to keep it like that for every month? It would have to be a fair bit if I was paying monthly, though usually when you pay annually, it's a bit cheaper. So I'd have to look at what that annual price was for that higher tier. Because $20 a month, that's like $240 a year. Yeah, I, a I got, yeah, that's a lot. Um, but there are some things they could do. There's like my wish list which is not going to happen. The biggest, there'd be one huge thing they could do and I would subscribe, no questions, I'm in, whatever, if they somehow managed to add trophies to the older games. They're not going to. Yeah. That's, because that's not happening. That's, um, that's coding work. Yeah, that's coding work. They're not doing it. That happens. Fucking take my money. Here's $400. Give me whatever you got. I don't know. Yeah, you're going to go um, back into every Tales game and be like, I am I am platinuming all of these. Yes, yes, exactly. Radiata Stories, Xenosaga Trilogy, all of you, you're getting me, I'm getting that platinum. Um, 
but really it would just have to be like a really, really good library. I'd have to look and have enough games where if I subscribe for three months, I'd still have a bunch I really want to play, like really want to play. Um, and I mean, I have a bit here and I, I put together a quick list of like five games or six games right before. And I mean, that could last me, especially since most of them are JRPGs that would last me, you know, a good th four months, probably if I ignored my backlog. And yeah, you could literally buy a month of it and just be like, I'm picking you. You're, you're the game I'm going back to this month. Yeah. And when you think about it, like, sure, it's $20 for that month or 22 or whatever it'll be in Canadian, but like, what are you already paying for um, uh, PlayStation Plus? So it's almost like you rented a game for eight bucks, a really good game that, because back in the day, if you went to Blockbuster or wherever it was, and you rented a game for a weekend, you spent like $6 back then. What is that now? So is $8 for an entire month worth it for one of these games? 100%. Yeah, and if it, and if it's something that that's a month by month basis you can do, well then it's just even easier if you just say, okay, well I'm done. Let me go back to maybe extra, or let me go all the way back to essential. It works out that if they allow that, I think it works. So yes, I hope that it's a system of like if you already have like a year's worth of X, you can upgrade by just adding the extra cost to it. Hopefully that's what they do because for for you and me, like you know, we'll probably be using essential a lot more than we'll be using extra or or premium now yes depending on what they do in terms of it's if they do any day one launches for extra that might lead us up there but with premium specifically we don't know beyond the 340 they're going to throw in if they're going to add more now we've seen like nintendo for example have started slowly adding a few things into the switch online expansion pass but generally speaking um we've seen already with how ps2 on ps4 went where they put a bunch in and then almost never did anything since yeah, so the which worry, is very close to Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah, the worry I would have is that once they put that library in, that's it. And you then you would also worry, well, what if they start taking stuff away from it? Because you, you imagine not everything's going to be Sony-based. There's going to be third-party stuff in there. So, like, how long are these going to mm -hmm. sit on that store for? So Yeah, is this temporary? Are they going to be there six months or a year, then taken off, like a Game Pass and, and a Netflix model, basically how that works? Yeah, it's, there's a lot of questions when it comes to it. And the only thing I definitely know is that if I can upgrade month by month, you know, upgrade this month and then that's good for this month and four months later upgrade for a month or upgrade for two or three months because there's a bunch of games. I'm in, sure, of course. Um, but they'd have to keep either adding to the library or have the library big enough that it would necessitate me to actually have a year to play all these if I wanted. And then who knows, maybe once a month I'd, I'd pick a random JRPG and play through it, uh, you know, on the side of my main AAA new game that I'm playing or something. And it'd be a nice uh, palate cleanser, you know? And then there's even, like, the simple question of, are there even games out there that they will never be able to put on that service just because you can't get the code for them? Oh, yeah. Because I don't know if it's as simple as, because, again, I'm not the biggest tech on this. I don't know if it's as simple as taking the code off of a disc that already exists or a cartridge. I think with cartridges it would be harder, but we're not talking about that. We're just talking PS1, 2, and P. Which are yeah. which are essentially discs, although the PSP is a little bit it's a disc. It's it's a bit of a weird kind yeah. of disc, but it was a disc. It's a weird disc. Yeah. So I mean the possibilities there. It's just there yeah. might be some cases where games just you can't get them anymore. So and I think that's why I'm hoping that a lot more of the library is gonna be more obscure than we than we think it might be, because there are a lot of games out there that people have never been able to play because they could never find the games to begin with. Even back when they were like released, there were certain yeah. games that weren't easy to find. I would also just like for some certain JRPGs, like Magna Carta, to go back to go on there just so I can remember how oh. garbage they were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you gotta have some stuff like that that you can just go back and, and nostalgia. Yeah, I don't want all just on. good games. I wanna I wanna remember yeah. how bad some of these were. Yeah, absolutely. Uh so I said a couple of the games that I had was hoping was on there. Did you have a couple that you were hoping, whether it's PS2, PS1, or PSP? Well, PS1, like, immediately, I would think Mega Man Legends is a big one. Oh, that's a good one. That would be one that I'd like to see, because I only own two on disc, which I'm amazed I still have, because that thing is technically worth a lot of money now. Although I would never part with it, because I love that game. Uh, the original <laughs> one I could never find, and if I could, it'd be stupid expensive, too. I It'll be too expensive now, yeah. And that that's a game that I wish they would bring back. I, every time that there used to, there used to be rumors about a Legends 3 
so many times. The same like the same level of Chrono Break, you know, that third elusive Chrono game. Mega Man Legends 3 was a thing that's been teased on and off forever. I think the last time I heard about it was like maybe three or four years ago, there was another tease of it. And with the way that that graphic style was, because it was very anime-esque too, I think that would look amazing on machines now because you, like, oh yeah, look at what Guilty Gear Strive is right now and how fucking gorgeous that game is as like a 2D, 3D anime level production. That's the kind of thing that like I can imagine like Mega Man would be saved so well because I mean Mega Man's had a really really weird journey in the last like 10 to 15 years. Yeah. I mean really yeah. since it moved off of um off, like, I think really since PS1 it's kind of always been in a weird state. I mean yeah. it's had all its handheld releases but like ever since then like ever since like really like X5 is start when you start to get into that era of like man Mega Man just isn't what it used to be. They tried with some of the old releases, like they tried doing like nine and ten, and I think eleven's the last one they did. I can't remember if it's eleven or yeah, twelve now. They did do eleven, yeah, which was kind of the old side scrolling look, but with like slightly 3D models. Yeah, so like there's definitely been an opening for Mega Man to kind of make a comeback. And I think if Capcom really wanted to take a shot at something, I uh, Legends would I would I would die so happy for that because I think it's one of the most unique games out there. Oh, 100%. Like, to have a a third-person Mega Man game and to be done so well and to have, like, such a a charm to it. Like, it was very lighthearted in comparison to everything else. You know, whereas a lot of Mega Man games were usually just, like, grind fest. You're just trying to get through, like, all the gritty things, whereas Legends was just... It almost felt like if Mega Man was an anime and, you know, the, the massive weeb that I am is, of course, really happy with that kind of stuff. And, like, even looking at some of the footage now from, from 2, like, man, if you just put a fresh coat of paint on that, like, it almost hasn't aged terribly now, just because, sure, the triangle texture still exists in, in PS1, but, like, the anime sort of, um uh, like, paint job they put over it kind of, like, hides it a little bit, so I think it would yeah. be pretty easy to sharpen. Oh, yeah. And, like, again, you, you make that 60 frames and really fluent with, like, better camera, because, again, PS1 games with camera were not exactly that great. Oh, that that could yeah. be a game that would be <laughs> so much fun to play, especially yeah. like a much more smooth version, which is my God, I, we would love every second of that, I think. Oh, hundred percent. I would, I would pick that up if that third game on every system I could find it. Yeah. Like I would one, throw money at it. 100%. Like I would, I would legitimately, I don't pre-order a lot anymore. That'd be one of those games. that would be like, crap. I really have to consider that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'd give into that hype hard hard but then speaking <laughs> of uh re- remakes or i guess remasters at this point i figure the last thing we should talk about is is a little bit of disappointment honestly yeah so in about a week's time on the 7th i believe chrono cross is officially going to have its remaster oh yeah and it was updated not too long ago that they miss they misspoke when they said that both soundtracks would be available and unfortunately it sounds like the original soundtrack won't be. Now, I've listened to the little bit that they've given out of what the new music is, and don't get me wrong, I don't hate it, but I feel like they might have changed them too much. Yeah. Like, you listen to 7 Remake, a lot of the music you still feel it's the similar vibe to, where there are songs in the Chrono Cross, like, remaster that they've shown that I go, I don't even recognize it. They showed, I think it was another Termina, and I listened yeah. to it and being like, this doesn't sound like another Termina at all. Like, I can hear the melody, but it doesn't sound anything like it anymore. Yeah, no. Like, with Final Fantasy VII Remake, it sounds like they took the songs and just, like, had an orchestra do them. Like, instead of it being a small production, same song, just, like, done with, like, so much power and and, and the new technology. It's like an orchestra, right? Whereas with this, yeah, it seems like they actually took, like, a new artistic approach to a bunch of the songs, and they don't sound the same i mean don't get me wrong like i would love to hear an, a complete album of overclocked remix uh like uh covers of chrono cross games and i do oh, yeah. because i do listen to those but oh, me too. <laughs> in the game itself i don't know if i'm comfortable with that and a lot of people are a little bit uneasy about it i'm sure when i play the game because we're both gonna do it oh, yeah. we're both gonna go oh this is actually still really good though but like you're still gonna sit there and be like but man, the original soundtrack is so fucking solid. Even to this day, I think it's still one of the best ever and sounds oh, still great today. I can oh, listen to easily. it now and think that 
it still doesn't say, it, it sounds old sort of but like because it's mostly just classical guitar it still sounds really nice yeah it's that was such a beautiful soundtrack and it was such like I, to be honest until you mentioned that to me today i had no idea that that actually had had that update that it had been taken away and i remember when i first read the post when it was like oh here's going to be the old graphics if you want the exact way it looked or you know this fresh look um and then there'll be the old music the original and then of course the the remastered i already had like made a decision in my head i was going to try the new graphics because it might look a little cleaner on my screen but leave the old music so new graphics old music i already made that decision and then that's not gonna happen or i'm gonna play it i'm gonna be halfway into the game and there's gonna be a patch and they're gonna put the music in because there is that possibility but there's also the possibility maybe they don't have the rights to some of the songs or something. I don't know. Well, I mean, considering Yasunori Mitsueda is on is in the project, you would assume that they would. Yeah. So, yeah, like, I don't it's... think it's that problem. So it's it's kind of confusing why they would do that. And I mean, in this day and age, if they if the backlash is enough, they'll patch it in. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm not concerned necessarily that it will never be in there. But because that was the decision they made, I'm a little perplexed towards why. Yeah, I don't get why. You're it's you're remastering a game that like okay, let me let me quickly Google when this thing came out just to show the age of it. But like we're it came talking, out in 2000. That's the only thing I remember. Uh, well, it, this is probably the Japanese release, November 18th, 1999. So this is technically oh, okay. a trying to do the math about 23 year old game. Yeah. Well, about 22 and change, but you, you get the point. Yeah. It's it's over 20 years old. You know, and people, this this is again, we'll talk about it several times on the show because this is this is our baby. You know, this is one of our babies for <laughs> sure. Um, Chrono hasn't seen a game since that 1999 release. Yeah. You know, there's Trigger was put on DS. You know, we've seen re-releases like very sporadically, but, you know, it, there hasn't been anything in 20 years. And people specifically with this game too are very fond of it. And you would think after 20 years, you want to get as much value out of this remaster as possible. So you want to bring as much nostalgia in there. And the fact that they're willing to go on a limb and saying, no, we're just going to do our new revised version of the soundtrack is a very questionable decision. And also really makes me question again, Square, because I really think Square yeah. has a bad relationship with its fans. I know some people may think otherwise, but like, I look at everything they've done with a lot of their properties, not counting 7 Remake, because 7 Remake seems to be an anomaly at this point. Most things that they re-release or they bring back or try to tease you with, they don't they don't seem to care as much about it as we think they should. It's almost yeah. like they hate what brought them to the dance sometimes. Yeah, yeah, kind of, right? Yeah, like, it's almost like, yeah. You haven't seen the traditional turn base since really 10... Really 10, I mean, I guess technically 10 too, but it also had the the job system to go with it. Um, you know, a lot of these things with Final Fantasy specifically is that it feels like they don't know what they want it to be anymore, even though literally all of their fan base seems to go, we know what we want. Like, we've told you a thousand times. And they're like, oh, you mean you want this open world Final Fantasy game that plays like Kingdom Hearts? No, that's not what we said. No. And like, well, we have Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I know that there's games like I Am Setsuna now, there's Bravely Default. So it's not like these games don't exist coming out of Square, but like with the name recognition that we have, you know, again, no Chrono games. Final Fantasy hasn't been turn based in forever. So, yeah. you know, when things like this happen with Chrono Cross, with the soundtrack, the original not being brought in, it just continues that narrative that a lot of us feel, which is they don't care about their fan base anymore. No, I. I... Yeah, like it's it's really weird because they'll put out like people are like we want Final Fantasy Tactics back, and then they'll do some triangle strategy or one of these other games that I know they just recently announced for like PlayStation or something. And it's definitely like here's Final Fantasy Tactics, but it's different characters, different world, different franchise. We're we're doing that one. We don't want to do a Final Fantasy. It Tactics. is so weird that like Project Triangle strategy exists and they don't just call it Final Fantasy Tactics. Whatever. Yeah. Like that's a selling point because like yeah. we live in an industry right now in, in the gaming industry where like you'll put you'll slap any name on something that'll get extra a couple extra buys out of it you would think square would look at this and be like well look we don't even care like clearly they don't care about the license because they haven't brought anything in forever about it they don't re-release these things too by the way speaking of things that should be on 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 the premium edition final fantasy tactics yeah you oh, know yeah. like it feels like it would be so easy for this game. And I don't, 
know who like who directed or produced this and specifically what they were going for but like Square is the publisher they can easily say look call whatever you want but we want to slap the Final Fantasy Tactics label on it it's not going to reference anything you know as we saw they used to like doing that because we know Final Fantasy Spirits Within has nothing to do with Final Fantasy so like it's strange to me that something that clearly looks like as you said Tactics is not even being named the tactics even though literally every person on the planet that sees that trailer goes oh that's tactics yeah yeah there's tactics it's right there that's oh, got a weird name must be just its uh demo name or its secret code name until it gets a release it, it's it's just I strange know. i i don't get it i mean again i'm gonna play it because again chrono cross is like one of my favorite games of all time i'm a bit afraid oh, that i'll play it and be and not nearly like it as much because i'll remember oh yeah I'm not 15 and really just like kid a lot because God damn it. She was gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, she kind of kickstarted my interest in tomboys. So it's kind of her fault. I, I mean, we can blame her. I she mean, won't I, know it. I mean, unfortunately I never found an Australian tomboy. So, you know, I could never get the full experience. Cause you know, I, I would, I, I would really just once in my life, like get into an argument and then she gets so mad at me that she says she's going to kick my arse so hard. I'll kiss the moons. <laughs> but unfortunately that's not going to happen so you know uh, un unless my girlfriend can uh i guess you know dye her hair blonde grow a really big ass ponytail i guess put some blue contacts in and then figure out how her australian accent's going to sound but i think that might be a little bit of work for her so yeah i feel like learning a whole accent is going to not be easy yeah yeah i yeah. mean yeah it's it's doable but you know it seems like a lot of effort for not a lot of uh return you know <laughs> This is true. This is true. So, huh. as we near the end of the show, I have one thing left to do, and I get to have some fun now. So, Kalen likes oh. to throw trumpy, trophy stumpers at me as a as a game to kind of test me and try to stress me out. I'm now about to do the same to Chris. Ah. Uh, so <laughs> I haven't named this yet, but I'm just it. Here, here's what it's going to be. I'm going to give you the name of a game, oh. and I'm going to ask you within. Five dollars. Tell me what the price of a loose copy of that game is today. Today? Holy yes. crap! So here are the All rules. Right. I'm going to give you five guesses. I'm okay. going to tell you if it's if you're really far off early and like a hundred bucks over, I'll tell you. Okay, you're way. It's way higher. So if I say way higher, it's a hundred bucks or more. After that, I'll just say higher, lower. So your goal is okay. to try to get within five dollars, and then you know maybe we'll up the tries. <sighs> from five but i want to i want to see just how good this is because i know this is going to stress you out because you know what i'm giving you first no i don't no wait what are you giving me i want you to tell me what the super nintendo u.s version of chrono trigger is today loose copy loose copy and this is i'm assuming this oh, is right. in u.s dollars it doesn't say but you know we'll just work with that Okay, so it's a loose copy, not like unopened in box, anything like that. And this that. is specifically Just... Super Nintendo, not Super Famicom, not like. Right. So this is this is Super Nintendo. This is U.S. Right. print. U.S. Let's go. I'll start reasonable. One hundred and fifty U.S. You are, you. It, it is higher. It is higher. Oh my god. Actually, I'll be nice uh, on this one. It is way higher. It's not a hundred, but it's very close. Oh wait, shit! I just gave it away then. <laughs> It's very close. Uh, so like 245? Yeah, that's actually the price. Two, <laughs> 24563. I just I put default, my foot in my mouth. Default. Okay. Default. Well, I'll have to do a different one then. <laughs> no, I won by default. All right, so we'll do uh, we'll do Chrono Cross then. Okay. This this one will be a little bit easier anyway, but we'll we'll do that for fun. I'll remember for next time not to be nice cuz I was like, crap, if I say higher, you got to go $95. That was a, that was a weird one. Yeah, that's very close. Yeah, that's true. So, Chrono Cross, uh this this is the original PlayStation copy and this is yeah, this is again the US version. So, this is loose. Yeah, US. Loose. This one I feel hmm I'm going to go with like 110 US. Lower. Lower. Okay. Yeah, I figured this one would be lower. $26.99 pre order on PlayStation and Nintendo Switch and Steam. No. <laughs> that I just know because I wish listed it everywhere. Um, let's go 75 US. Still lower. Wow. Maybe this pre order is overpriced. Um, I remember this go... is used and loose. So Used and loose. Okay. Let's go 45. Still lower. So you got two more guesses. What? Okay, this is unheard of. 25. 
still lower. The pre-order is overpriced. <laughs> <laughs> um, fifteen. The cor- the correct price of a loose copy of just the regular edition of Chrono Cross is fourteen ninety seven. The greatest oh, hits great. version apparently is twenty thirty eight, which is interesting because you would figure the greatest hits version would have more copies printed. <laughs> yeah, and it's I saw I saw that and I type. went, huh? What? Now it may just Chrono it may Trigger. just be it may just be the data that's that's like yeah. given to us currently because I don't know where they're taking this from. Mm. So, like for example, they're saying the new price of the greatest hits is thirty bucks, whereas a new price of a normal, like a, an original first print, is sixty one. So, uh, there is that differential of a sealed copy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that would make sense because the greatest hits would have come later. And also, again, we were yeah. doing the loose price of just the disc. So. Yeah. And ironically yeah. enough, the price of the greatest hits version is literally like a nine cent difference between box and loose. So it tells you that most copies of it are just in box. Yeah. Wow, also, it, it all, I, well, I wonder, do I, I can't remember which version I have. I can't remember if I have the greatest hits version. It's in another room. Otherwise, I would have gotten out of my chair, but I'm not running across the hall to grab it. I know, I'm pretty sure I have the greatest hits edition. I don't know if greatest hits is printed on the disc. So that, that'd be interesting. I wonder if just getting a loose wow. disc version of greatest hits would just be the same. Yeah, yeah. Hard to say. Because yeah, I can't remember if it had, because it had like that black PlayStation logo part on the disc. Well, yeah, on a normal copy, it would be the black PlayStation on the bottom, whereas Greatest Hits would have the green on the side. Yeah, it was the green, right? So I wonder what. Is then you get the PS2 the era disc. where now it's it was the red strip on the top? Yeah, red. Yeah, which I think continued, right? Isn't that what they did with. I think in PS3, yes, they did the same. Yes. And then I don't I don't know if they did that for PS4 afterwards because well no. I didn't buy a lot of physical after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't remember much. I don't, I don't know how you greatest hits. hits a lot of these things anyway. When I mean they do it on the digital store, so there's that I guess. Yeah, these are a greatest hit, but it's the exact same download. So here you go. <laughs> it's on sale. But yeah, That's crazy. Chrono, Chrono Cross on its own Super Nintendo loose copy is two hundred and thirty dollars more expensive than Chrono. Or, Cro, wait, Chrono Trigger is two hundred and thirty dollars more expensive than Chrono Cross. Yeah, that's crazy because you can get Chrono Trigger on your phone on PC. Well, I imagine like an actual physical copy because again, Super Nintendo days there wasn't nearly as many gamers back then. Probably didn't yeah. print nearly as much. Also, again, this is the US version. Ironically enough, if I go back to the list, which I closed because I'm an idiot, um. The Super Famicom version is $15, so they probably mass produce it in Japan. That would make sense, yeah. Especially since it was like the dream team of Japanese developers and artists and everything, And right? it's the only copy that's in triple digits, the, the US version, because Japan DS is 51, Japan PlayStation is 23, regular DS in the US is 79, uh, Europe DS is 71, uh, DS in the US is 98, so it's almost 100, but not quite. And then the ultimate hits in Japan is 17. The strategy guide is more expensive than all of those. The strategy guide is $150, which is... What? Well, I mean... Wow. At that, at that point, you're not getting the strategy guide to read it. You're getting it to just put no. it on a shelf at that point. Yeah. I have a lot of strategy guides still in a box, and they're all Final Fantasy. Like, Well, one yeah, back in the day when like you used 13. to get special editions of games, and they actually came with booklets. Yeah. Oh no, like I bought the like full on Brady oh, the, games. Um, like play and, uh, arts and Yeah. Oh yeah. I would also buy like the special edition. I have Final Fantasy 13 2, the strategy guide, and it's like a coffee table book. Like it's huge and it looks so fancy, but it's just a strategy guide for not a good trilogy. Like I don't understand why that was the one I did that for. I remember the only reason I bought twelve initial or no. The only reason I bought oh was it twelve? It might have been twelve. Oh yeah, I bought a collector's edition of twelve because it came with like this collection dvd that just like went through the history of final fantasy oh yeah. which i thought was neat and then i played oh, 12 yeah. and i'm like i forget most of you i just i just i remember two <laughs> things i remember i remember i'm captain bosch and fran which because why wouldn't you forget how, yeah, could how you would forget you forget fran? fran yeah it's impossible can't forget her but anyways we are almost an hour in i think that's a good place to stop so yeah our Absolutely. first one's in the book thank you so much for joining the family once one more chris because uh it's nice to have you on. It's nice to have a retro show. And I think we're going to be having a lot of fun in the future doing this. Oh, we are absolutely going to have a lot of fun. And thanks for having me. Let me join the, the Pixel Play family. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. 
So yeah, uh, if you guys did enjoy this podcast, in the words of Kalen, thank you. I, I hope it was good for you because it was for us. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking to get further into us, um, the biggest, the easiest thing you can do is check our link tree. That's link tree. So it's L I N K tr dot ee slash pixel play podcast that gives you all our links that's the link to our discord that's the link to our all our social media accounts our mail uh, address if you ever want to ask us questions that goes for this show as well it's all there it's all under the banner so like if you want to ask a question for specifically this podcast just make sure you you know which podcast it's for because now that we have two it's going to get a little more complicated this way all of a sudden kaylin's gonna be like hey we got a question on our show about about like pac-man what what like i don't don't worry we'll take care of that but yeah uh so the way that the schedule is you know you're seeing this show saturday mornings at 10 a.m pixel play podcast which is me and caleb where we go through more of the current news stories that is every wednesday at noon so you can look forward to us there so yeah on behalf of chris and myself thank you so much for checking out our first episode of cartridge and quarters we will see you next saturday as we uh probably talk about final fantasy and chrono trigger for probably the mo- at least half of that show too oh we've got another year of that oh yeah for sure. oh yeah for sure bye-bye right. <laughs> cheers